Today, we will provide a quick overview of the new cool UUID version 7, explain how it relates to version 4, and discuss when to use one over the other. Then, we'll do a quick Rust coding examples and explore the different ways we can efficiently serialize UIDs as strings using Base64 or even Base32 hex to preserve alphabetical ordering. Okay, first, let's start with a very quick overview of UUID version 4. So, you've probably seen this kind of string like that. And that is a UID. And this is actually 16 bytes. So, for each byte, each character is hexadecimal. And so, we have two characters when we serialize it for one byte. In total, we have 128 bits. Now, for the V4, we have a first four bits, which is kind of at the middle, like that, which is for the version. That is the four bits that give us a version. And then we have two to three bits, actually, in V4, for the variant. And then everything else, which is the 48 bits at the beginning, the 12, and the 62, is pure randomness. Which means that everything in purple is the entropy of the UUID V4. So that has a pretty high entropy, meaning that every time we roll the dice, every time we generate a new one, there is no predefined distribution. It can be anywhere. So that's make it unique, but also kind of distributed. When we go to the V7, we have the same thing here, which is the four bits and the two bits, which is actually, in this case, really two. And that is a random. But now at the beginning, what we have is time. And that will be stored as a unix epoch timestamp, UTC from 1970, in millisecond precision. So that is the difference between the two here. V4 is we have no time and all of the 48 plus 12 plus 62 are completely random. And in this case, we have a time section and then those are completely random. So the key difference between V4 and V7 is that V4 has maximum entropy, meaning that most of the bits are fully random. So it's fully distributed into the 122 bits. And V7 has a time component at millisecond precisions, so it will be kind of sequential in a way in nature for the first part. And the second part will add randomness. So actually, both are very useful for different use cases. So if we compare V4 and V7 with benefits and usage, on the V4 side, we have the uniqueness, obviously, with the full randomness, and we have a very high entropy. And that is good for two main use cases. First one, for example, is for everything that requires high entropy, like hashing salts. So in this case, we want maximum entropy to make sure that we hash correctly. And then the second usage, which is also very important in some cases, is when we want to have a context-free ID, when it's not acceptable to have an ID with a time component in it. For example, in healthcare, sometimes we do not want the metadata to have the date of the operation, because that, if we correlate with another set of data, we can get into some compliance issues. So the V4, because it's context-free and fully random, is actually very good in this kind of use cases. The problem of V4 is that because all of the data is fully distributed, it doesn't really lend itself very well for database indexing, which usually databases like to have proximity or locality between the data. And that is how they can index relatively well without having to jump to too many places. So that is where V7 here still has the uniqueness by the nature of time and the randomness. And one big benefit of being timed is that now the data, all of the UUIDs that we're going to generate, are going to be relatively sequential, at least the beginning of the UUID. And that, in turn, allows the database to do a much better job at indexing them. And that allows us to use UUID v7 as database IDs, which is kind of a game changer now because it has the benefits of integer IDs from an indexing standpoint. It's a little bit bigger, but otherwise it performs pretty well, but also has the benefits of being unique across databases. And that is a big win. 
And then obviously, if you need to have some ideas that can be time sortable, where millisecond is okay, then that is also a very good way. Okay, now there's a little trick here of how you can serialize them into string while you preserve the alphabetical order. So let's go back to coding and we're going to play with some UUID v4, v7, and some serializations. Okay, so we're in our VS code. So the way that I like to start is with the lints. Now we have this and I'm going to actually uncomment this one. So like this, we don't have too many warnings at the beginning. But then when I commit and I do production code, that is where I comment this out. Now that will be an XP. So usually when I do XP dash, this is how I learn new libraries. So I do an XP dash and then I do either a main.rs, here is going to be simple, or sometimes I do a lib.rs. So we're going to use three libraries. The first one is a UUID, version one is super stable. And then we're going to use v4 as a feature, v7, and then that is to generate the random faster. And then we're going to use a couple of things. One is a data encoding, and that will give us base64, base64 URL, and base32 hexadecimal. And this one is important to have alphabetical order. We're going to see that later. And then another one is base58. So obviously you don't have to do those, but as part of this exercise, I want to show some different techniques of serializing UUIDs. So now if we go to the main.rs, that is now the best practice that I'm using. I am doing two type alias, and that is because it's an example file here, which is a pub type result of T. And so that would be actually in all my patterns. Usually we have the result of one type, and then that would take the error which is a type error of box DIN error. So I'm not using any how anymore because that works actually very well. And that will follow actually the best practice of my production code later when I actually put this to that in a mode error and then I do the re-export like that. So that is usually what I have in my main modules. But when I start, I do like that. Okay, and so now we have the main and the print hello world. So usually what I like to do when I learn a new library, I toggle the terminal and I'm doing a cargo watch dash Q quiet dash C to clear dash X to execute. And I do a run dash Q. So here I'm good to go now. So the way the API works is relatively simple. We do a let UUID and we're going to do a UUID v4 first. And we're going to do a UUID new v4 uuid v4 here we need to import uid and so typically i like to do that below and now i'm going to do uid v4 so now we just generate a thing like that so the uid here has a display trait and that's why it can display like that so so far so good so sometimes when i like to print also i like to format relatively well because otherwise it gets tricky so one trick i like to do is something like that where i'm going to say align it to the right 12 that should be enough i'm going to have the colon like that and that will be basically the label and we're going to see why later because then when we're going to change things we're going to see the different lens and everything is going to be clean okay so i have this one now and if i wanted to do a uuid v7 i would just do let UID. Here I'm shadowing the same variable, so it's a different variable, just using the same name. And now it's not new v7 because it's by time. So you can do a new and then give a time, but usually you will do a now v7. And the library will get the system now and then we create a UUID with that. If we go down, now I'm going to take that, open that, I'm going to do that for symmetry. And that is obviously v7 press save and we have the two and we see here as we've seen before here the numbers the version of the uuid so that works pretty well that was probably the reason why it was four bits and not three the variant here is a little bit trickier because it's two or three depending of v4 or v7 so we he looks like it's nine but it's actually not always nine sometimes it's a or something like that okay so that's pretty cool now, one thing that we can see for locality, it's a nice little trick, 
we can select that and put that into for loop like that. We're going to do the same thing for this one. And then we're going to add a print LN at the middle, just to be nice. Now we can see here that the beginning is completely random. I mean, the beginning, the end, the middle or whatever, it's all over the place for the V4. So if we press save again, we see that things are, are all over the place. It's not really a pattern except this guy, but everything else is completely random. Now, what we can see with the V7 is that that is relatively fixed up to here, yes. Now, the trick is because we have millisecond precision, and those are probably below the millisecond, this is why they are all equal, yeah, because they fall into the same millisecond. If we were going to do a slip here, and that should be pretty cool. So this one got to skip a bit here, but otherwise that makes sense now. So that is the same, and that goes up because we have our millisecond precision. And so that, the reason why this is good for database, because the database now can put the things which are relatively close to each other in the same page of index, and it doesn't have to jump everywhere. And there's another point here which is interesting, is that because the default serialization of UID is quite long, because it's not very efficient from a space standpoint, because it's hexadecimal, so basically we are using a full byte where we are storing only 16, so it takes a little bit more space. But because of the alphabet of the hexadecimal, we start at zero and up to F, actually sort the string with time and that will respect the time order as well. So that is pretty cool. If you encode the bytes into base64, base64 URL or base58, is not going to be the case, and we're going to see that. But there's one trick here, is you can encode it with base32 hexadecimal, and that will preserve the alphabetical order. That will make it shorter. And that is what we're going to do right now. That will print our UUID. And now, this is where we can start encoding. So again, this is pretty long. We can use that. My best practice is when I use Postgres SQL, I use a Postgres data type, UUID, and that will store it in a 16 byte. So that will be as efficient as it could be. And I think that Postgres already added V7. So you can generate it, and I think that even the previous version can store it. Now, when I'm using SQLite, for example, for desktop apps or edge services, then the trick is how do I store it in SQLite? Because I could store it in blobs, which will be a byte array of 16, or I could store it as a string. And that is what I prefer. So now what I could use is I could use that string, but that is pretty long. And in fact, we're going to add a little bit a thing here in our best practices. We're going to add the, the length to string length. And we're going to save. So that is 36 characters because there's a little bit of wasted, but also that is not as efficient as it could be. So one way we can do is encode it in base64. And you can use a base64 crate, which is very good. And I'm using data encoding because there's one base32x, which is not part of the base64 crate. So data encoding works like that. We do a base64, actually a little bit simpler than the other one, and we do an encode, and we do the UUID as bytes. So that will give us a string, and I can print it in, have the base64 and the length here. Press save, actually put it in 18 to make it bigger, and then that will align very nicely. So now we see that base64 is 24, that's better. This one is 36 still have this silly padding here. So one thing we could use, and one thing I like to use for other things as well, is base64 URL, no padding. So for that is kind of super easy. So we do a base64u, U, and then this one is URL no pad. Press save. And now we see that we're just removing the pad, basically, because that is what base64 URL Notepad is it change two characters to make it more URL friendly, and then it remove the padding, and so we have a little bit of shorter things. So that's nice, but one thing which is very important to notice here is that 
does encoding doesn't preserve order. So now when I'm going to sort alphabetically, it might not be by the same order than I would have sorted either the string version or the 48 bits of the time. So I'm losing the order. So if I'm using this string, for example, to add in a file name or in a S3 pass or something, I'm going to lose the order. Might not matter, or it might. And so that is where there's another one from the data encoding, which is pretty cool. It's a little bit longer, but it's the base 32 X. And this is this guy. And we're going to take the notepad. And so basically data encoding library is a crate that encode and decode all of the power of two bases. So it's actually a pretty nice one to use. And the specification for the exe is actually the alphabet for the encoding has been picked such as it respects the alphabetical ordering. So now that we have this, press save, and that will give us 26. So it's a little bit longer than our 22, shorter than our 36. And that will actually order in an alphabetical order. And so Personally, this is what I use for SQLite because this one stressed me out with this kind of dash, but it's kind of silly in a way, but I feel that this one is a little bit more efficient and it doesn't have the dash because sometimes I like to have dashes for something else. And when I use this UID serialization as a string, it will index relatively well and I can use it in file names and so on. Now, the inconvenient of that is when people are going to get this format, there's really no way to guess that that is a UUID. So if you are doing an API for the outside world and you want people to know the type of serialization that this ID means, then it might be good to do that. Now, if you don't care, and then the ID is just a black box, like most of the IDs that we get is just a string and the user doesn't have to care about what it is, then it's completely fine to use the strategy you want. Now, there's another one here, and this is why I had the base 58, and I'm not saying this one is a good one, but if we are generating a UID, which is a V4 or a V7, to give to a user such as they can retype it as a passcode or whatever. The problem with all of these alphabets is that you have the one, the I, and the L, which might be confusing. I get confused sometimes with the mailing kind of IDs where it's not an I or it's an L or something like that. So there's an alphabet for that, which is a base 58. So we're going to say base 58. And that is, and the API is a little bit different, is UUID and is a trait on bytes, so as bytes, and then you can do two base 58. And we're going to change that. Go up and use base 58 to base 58. So that is a crate that needs to be implemented. And now it works. And so this one here, interestingly enough, when it's V7, is one character less of base 64 used somehow. But if you have a new V4 here, it's going to be 22. I'm sure this is how the math works, but it doesn't really matter. So that is kind of the strategy. If you really want to give that to a human being, like a code that they will enter it or they will spell it to someone else, like for example, these tracking numbers, base 58 is actually pretty good. And that I think is a Flickr format. There's two different alphabets, I think, or something. Otherwise, if you really want to be standard, that might be completely fine. If you don't really care and you want to give a black box to people, or if you are giving to yourself and you know what it means, for me, I like to have this format because I don't lose the alphabetical order and it's a little bit more specific. I agree, it's just a feeling than the UUID 36. Okay, and that will be it for today. Hope you liked it. Big thanks to Quam Nebula for the sponsorship. Patreon, any help is big help. Until next one, happy coding.